So code blocks 8.02 has been downloaded, click on open. We will run the code blocks setup. It warns about the potential of being harmful, but because we trust the code blocks setup, open source software is guarded by many users and programmers. We will click on OK. The wizard is launched. Now that the code blocks is getting ready to install itself, we read that it is actually recommended that we close all other windows. So that's exactly what we will do. We will Alt Tab to other windows and close them by clicking on the X to close the windows. In this way, we do not have to reboot Windows XP in order to run code blocks right from the start. So we are closing the last windows, the terminal and the control panel. And now we are left with only the installer. The advice has been followed. So we can now click on next. And now the installer will show us the license. I recommend you read it. It is GPL based. Click on I agree if you agree. Default install and contrib plugins are by default checked. I recommend you leave it like that. Because we will not be using any other user accounts, we will leave share config unchecked. Contrib plugins contains the plugins that users and developers have contributed to the CodeBlocks project. Default install contains the core components and plugins for the CodeBlocks project. Now that we have set the components to be installed, let's agree with these options and click on next. At the C hard disk program files is the path where CodeBlocks will be installed. The space required for this version is 29.4 megabytes. Now you see a series of extractions. It asks if you want to run code blocks now click on yes code blocks is now starting the initialization might take a while it has to load all of its components and it will firstly ask us which compiler we want to use for default we click on gnu gcc which is detected and set as default then click on ok code blocks is now opening close the initial tip and then click on the default yes associated with c c++ files which end on .c or .cpp click on ok to set the file association once and for all create a new project on the start page we will click there a wizard will be shown depending on which one we choose gtk project dynamic link library we'll choose that console application once we've chosen it click on go and then we see that the wizard starts click on next which language we want as default click on c this will set a special command line argument for gcc then click on next the project's title and path is asked now we input the project's name start to learn c to create a new folder click on the browse button on the ellipsis button the browse for folder dialog appears select my document make new folder on my documents and name it c underscore project or you can name it whatever you want click on ok and then you see absolute path is that one that I highlighted and this one is the project file name and this is the resulting absolute path with the file name appended at the end. A project file manages the rest of source files and header files. We agree with these values and click on next. The next screen is a series of configurations of the compiler GNU GCC is all right. Create a debug configuration and we leave it checked. The debug configuration is called debug. We leave it like that. The output there is bin backslash debug and the object's output there is obj backslash debug. This is for the files that are created when we compile. The release configuration is equally named release and release options are left by default. Output there is bin backslash release and the objects will be placed at obj backslash release because we agree with these values. We click on finish. The project has been created and now at the left side of this window, in that pane we see the sources virtual directory. Here is where the main .c will reside. That's the only file that the template has created. Inside the main .c file we'll see code that the template has generated. Once we double click it, at the right side appears the code that the wizard created. We see a return zero and a print f. We will delve into more details about these statements later on. But know that printf should print out to the terminal hello world.
printf stands for print formatted and return zero should inform the operating system that everything went okay. Note that every statement ends with a semicolon. These are the preprocessor directives. This includes other files inside this one. And of course the main function which is the one that is called every time the program is invoked. We will get into more details later in the series so don't worry much about the details. Worrying too much about the details can be detrimental to the learning process. Now let's build by pressing build and run. There's a little bug in this version of Codeblocks. Hopefully it will not persist in later versions. MinGW32G++. There's an indication there that something's weird. We click yes repetitively, but we still have the problem that it occasionally compiles. We'll see in the next video how to solve this.